You're listening to your hometown station, KHTS. This is Sharon Bronson taking a walk down memory lane for sure. Um, I have been out of radio for about a dozen years and uh, did some shows back in the day, um, back over at the Camp Plenty studio. But I had lunch with uh, Jerry Goldman the other day and um, was talking about this gentleman that I met at an event who was a fantastic singer. And uh, Carl and Jerry promote local talent quite often. And so um, she said, hey, well, let's bring him in the studio and why don't you do the interview? So that's why I'm here. <laughs> and i um, talking to Terrell Edwards. Hey, Sharon. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for uh, coming in today. Thanks and, for having me. Uh, um, sharing your talent with us. Okay. So um, tell us about how, how did you get to the Los Angeles area and... Tell us about that whole, that journey that you took to, to get here. Wow, how did I get to Los Angeles? Uh, you know what? Really good story. I hope you guys enjoy this, uh, because I did. <laughs> you know, I, uh, before I moved to the Los Angeles area, I lived in Canada. I lived in a, a, a province called Alberta. And, uh, you know, I always loved the jazz standards, the uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and they were called the, tr the, the Rat Pack. And I wanted to emulate that. So I found, found some guys that were really good guys and fun guys. And the, the, the four of us, actually, and ended up being three of us when, when we took the stage. But we, we uh, started the Tri-City Rat Pack in, in tribute to those guys. And, uh, man, we just had great, uh, great fun. Well, uh, you know, Jay Leno was coming to town. And he, he caught wind of the fact that, that we, we, we did this show, and he was looking for an opening act. Uh, make a long story short, we end up being his opening act uh, for his stand-up show, Two Hours, hilarious. And, um, you know, we did our, uh, our Tri-City Rat Pack show. It was a 30-minute show. He's actually going to be at um, the college. Then, that's right. Yeah. That's, he's yeah. going to be at the at college. This, college this, of Canyons. This, yeah. That's right, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, you know... Um, the crazy part about it, I mean, this is this is a guy that I remember, um, you, know, you know, 13, 14 years old. It was time for me to go to bed, and I need to get to bed before I'd sneak and watch his monologue because it was so funny, you know. So here I am uh, opening for him, and then backstage after, like, we're talking to him for, like, 30 minutes. Just the nicest guy you ever want to meet. And, uh, you know, after 30 minutes, I'm like, you know, I got to. I got a business card in my back pocket right here. So I said, you know, Mr. Leno, if you ever come back here again, we'd, we'd love to open for you again. He said, oh, okay, oh, sure, sure. Well, you know, and, you know, that's a shot in the dark, right? right. Well, yeah. guess what? Uh, you know, uh, two years later, he, he came back. He, wow. he asked for us. We opened for him again. Again, uh, at the end of the day, uh, end, end of the show, I'm saying thanks I uh, appreciate you know what you've done for us, and he says, uh, you know, Terrell, uh, have you ever worked in Las Vegas? And I said, no. He says, uh, would you like to? <laughs> I said, yeah. He says, so okay, well, we'll you call the, you call the Mirage and tell them you wanted that that you talk to me, and that I I want to do some shows with you. Just call the Mirage. That's what he said. So just <laughs> and I said and I'm looking at him. He says, call the Mirage and tell them that I want to do some shows with you. Tell them you talk to me. I was like, okay. Now you know, I probably should have asked him for a number, but I was so I was so just shocked that he that he asked me to do that, and that he even wanted us to participate. Make a long story short, after several calls for several months, I got in touch with the right person, <laughs> and uh, you know we ended up performing uh, with Jay Leno, opening act at the Mirage, the Terry Fader Theater. And uh, when we walked on stage and he came up, he says, hey, you made it. So I kind of think he was testing me a little bit to see what, what my, you know, what my ambition was going to be. So, um, wow, you know what, uh, that, that, that started a relationship that lasted three years. And for, th for, for three years, uh, when he showed up at the Mirage, uh, we got a call. And, and, and after, after every show, he said, see you at the next one, boys. Hmm. That's, that's a good thing to hear from Jay Leno, see you at the next one. So you know, I uh, uh, again, there was a, there was an opportunity. You know, after after seven or eight shows, I'm like, man, I cannot believe this is happening. And I, you know, one just, you know, our our time be behind 
the scenes was just really short with him. Pretty much when he when he finished, he was on his way mm -hmm. out of there. And so I, I you know, I, I had to thought process to write him a letter just to tell him thanks. And I also said, you know, if you ever get a chance, I'd, I'd love to get some tips from you. Give me a phone call. If you can give me a phone call, that'd be great. Well, guess what? He called me one day. That's he, awesome. He called me, and, and I missed the phone call oh. because it was unknown. It came up uh, unknown. Yeah, who answers unknown phone calls, that's, right? That's yeah. right. It came up unknown. I'm like, I'm not answering this, and I checked a voicemail, and it was Jay Leno. Oh, Terrell, I missed your phone call, wow. and I'm, like, freaking out. So, you know, the very next Sunday was Super Bowl Sunday. I'll never forget that. And I got a phone call. It was an unknown, on, unknown phone call again. Picked it up. It was him. We had about an hour long conversation. He asked me what were, what, what were some of the what were some of the questions I, I I had, and then he gave me a, a really high compliment, and is that you know, I really think you should be in L.A. He said you need to leverage these opportunities I'm giving you. There's going to be way more people uh, like me that'll see your talent, and uh, you know, you need to move to L.A. And here you are. Here I am. It took took a little bit of time for me to get myself together, but I uh, here I am. And uh, it's been it's I don't know, man I, it's been it's been incredible so far. Well, I know when I heard you sing the, for the first time um, that it, it, I stopped and oh. I was like, "Wow, oh, okay. who is who is this voice? Oh, you know, awesome. who is this person?" Yeah. So um, I, it's understandable because you're very talented. Oh, thanks, thanks, I appreciate you that. You are very talented. Um, so after you got here, mm -hmm. then tell us some of the things that you've been doing and. What is that process for meeting people and getting yourself entrenched in the music community in the Los Angeles area? Because I, it can't be that easy. No, well, I mean, uh, it, there was a bit of time in between uh, when he can't, when when uh, Mr. Leno gave me my marching orders. Okay. I said, okay, I need to kind of put a plan together here. So I did, I did make some contact uh, with some people here. Okay. Um, they were very instrumental in getting me in in, commu in, in, in communication with some other people and when I got here but you know things don't really happen until you actually get here and you're available so um, you know, I, I, st I met quite a few people along the way and uh, as Mr. Leno mentioned to me uh, he said if you spend nine months here uh, your life's gonna change because you're gonna start meeting people where are we at right now and uh, we're we're about nine months okay. in <laughs> we're about nine months in <laughs> Yeah. And so how's that? Was he right? Yeah, how's he, it he working was, out? He was absolutely okay. right. Okay, okay. He was absolutely right. And, um, but, then, but within, within uh, two months, you know, I met a guy uh, uh, named Rob Mullins. And uh, Rob Mullins is, a, is a, an incredible uh, jazz keyboard player. And I, from him, I met another guy. And from that guy, Christian Bell Navis, I met Preston Glass. Preston Glass is a producer uh, that has, man, he's been, he's behind the scenes of a lot of songs, uh, from Whitney Houston to Kenny G, uh, to um, wow. Aretha Franklin, all the way back to Johnny Mathis. I mean, he, he wrote a song for Johnny Mathis when he was 18 years old. And so, uh, I ended up meeting this guy, and uh, we, you know, hit it off right away. I mean, um, it just kind of felt like I've known him forever. Mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, he took he took. Uh, an appreciation for what I did as a as an artist as a singer, um, and we we started writing a song. Uh, he actually introduced a song to me uh, to me uh, called One Hundred Percent. That song uh, they actually let me write a bit on it and uh, to put my own spin on it, and uh, One Hundred Percent took off uh, in the UK. Uh, that song actually reached the number five on the on the uh, UK soul charts. Uh, in 2001, it was it was part of the top 100 songs in 2001. Two, 21. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 2021. 20, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 2021. Yeah. Good night. Current here. Yeah. Is, 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 is um, it already? <laughs> well, let's hear it. Let's let's hear it. This okay. is this is you singing. Right. Preston producing. That's right. Okay. Let can we hear that song? 100. percent We're in studio talking to Terrell Edwards, listening to 100%. And while we were in here, we're joined in here with Patty. Patty. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Patty the man. Patty. <laughs> and he's back there grooving and dancing. So, yeah, I'd um, love to see that, man. Of course. This is 
the first time that this song has been played in the U.S. Well, it's a big the, hit in the U.K. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's this breaking here in Santa Clarita. Right here in Santa Clarita. Santa Clarita. And, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the songs that, uh, one of many songs that, that uh, Preston and I have been working on. So there's more to come. But oh, good. hopefully we'll, we'll keep breaking them right here in Santa Clarita. What do you like about Santa Clarita? Oh, What's drawn man. you to Santa Clarita? Well, you know what, you know what uh, Sharon? I, I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. You know, and I grew up in Milwaukee in a, in a time where, like, like, like everybody was your, every, everyone was your was your neighbor. Everyone was your friend. If you walked to the you know corner store, you knew someone. If you if you walked around the block, you knew someone. And you know the 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 friendly uh, environment that I see, the, the, you know the camaraderie that I that I experience when I go to the store. You know, it's just everybody's just so nice, man. I mean, it's just a friendly place and uh you know what that's why we stick around anywhere because that's right you know yeah. because it, because yeah. we like the people and um you know more than anything that's what i love about santa clarita so t what are you tell me what you're working on now that may not be there's there's some things in santa clarita that are coming up mm -hmm. but there's also mm -hmm. some other things in the los angeles area that you're doing so where can people go and listen to you and hear you sing and do the myriad of songs that you do well, you know, I I, I had a, I've had a, a, a tremendous experience and uh, and opportunities to build relationships here, like probably pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, the Get Together Foundation is is one for sure uh, that I've em embraced and built relationships with. They're doing something uh, April twenty third. What's the t tell us what what's the Get Together Foundation? Uh, the, the Get Together Foundation does a, does a lot of uh, uh, um, charity uh, charity work uh, in town here. Okay. You know, for for poverty relief oh, pri okay. primarily. Okay. Okay. And uh, you know that's real, something that's really near near and dear to my heart. Uh, Kevin Wax is is, is the uh, founder. You know, just a tremendous guy. And uh, we're going to be getting together. We're, we're doing what we call a one hit wonder concert ah. April April twenty third. It's down in the, at the palace. If you guys know where that is, uh, uh, there's an, another organization uh, that I'm that I'm dealing with, and um, uh, Herb Alvis Vibrato is uh, something I. That's a great at, dinner club. That's a place I've yeah. always wanted to perform. I had a chance to per, per, uh, per, be featured there a couple of times. They've asked me to come and join uh, and and do my own show. Uh, that's May nineteenth. Uh, please get your tickets, mm -hmm. and uh, man, you know um, it's just it's just been incredible so far. I just got wait, uh, so many things that are happening at a really rapid pace, and I'm just really excited about all of it. You know, there's some other things I'm doing out, outside of uh, uh, the LA area too, but uh, we can maybe we can talk about that. So, so KHTS is presenting you where? So that's coming up this pretty is, soon. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And KHTS is, uh, I guess, it's the, the, the Canyon Club, mm -hmm. you know, and that's uh, that's over in Town Center. Right. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm still learning my way around. <laughs> but uh, there's a there's a there's a group called Ambrosia. I don't know if you guys heard of them. Ambrosia. If you haven't, you remember the song. Make a wish, baby. You remember yeah, that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally remember that song. <laughs> so, man, I've, I've, I've listened to those Played guys. Played on hot AC stations. Yeah, yeah. man. I mean, mm. I, I get a, I'm going to get an opportunity to open for those guys. Oh, fantastic. And uh, that is going to be, that's June June 18th, I believe it is. Yes, yeah. Oh. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of that show. And uh, thank you for uh, KHTS for uh, involving me in that as well. Yeah, that's a that's a great little club, and he's got several of them around the Los Angeles area. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They do bring I'm, a lot of talent out here. So yeah, I'm, I'm, it's it's that's, it's amazing what what uh, uh, what that organization is, is doing to you know just just, just keep the yeah. keep the community tight around music. You know, it's been a, it's been a tough time for music here over the last couple of years. Absolutely. And we're we you know we're getting ourselves to, you know kind of getting back in the swing of it. I don't think we're quite there yet, but you know, it's you know, organizations like KHTS, you know, uh, like the Canyon Club, that are helping us get back on track. And you know, we're you know, as as musicians and singers, mm -hmm. you know, we love doing what we're doing. Otherwise, we're like fish out of water. Okay. Well, and you know what? Let's talk about some of the other things when we come back. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back with Terrell Edwards. Right. You're listening to your hometown station, KHTS. This is Sharon Bronson. We are in studio with. Singer, entertainer, extraordinaire Terrell 
Edwards. And 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 music kind of sewer. Oh, I like and that music little, kind of sewer. Like, like yeah, back, Patty, that was like. Doo, 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 doo. Oh like yeah, that. no, like exactly that. the piano. Yeah. <laughs> we touched on the pandemic. Yeah. And how that has been a time where a lot of business and a lot of things that we enjoyed have ended mm -hmm. for about two years. Mm -hmm. So what? how did you stay busy? How did you stay motivated? What was it that you were doing those two years while you couldn't be out performing? Well, you know what? It, 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 it allowed us, forced us to get very creative, you know. Uh, in, those, in, those, in that time, I'd, I'd, I'd first say that... Um, I was a, kind of a victim of that, those COVID years, you know, and uh, uh, right around uh, um, June of uh, 2020, I got a call. Uh, my dad was feeling really sick. He had no um, health conditions at all. He was a very healthy, 80-year-old man, and, uh, and we're down in Mississippi, and uh, about a week later, uh, we got, got him, to, him and my mom to go and get a COVID test. They had one. Of course, you got to remember this is this is the early right. period where they didn't know a lot about this. And um, you know, my dad um, was a musician. Uh, he was a photographer. Uh, he was a singer. Wow. Uh, he was a gospel choir director. And so, um, you know, I, I learned lots. My dad was my hero, basically. You know, and uh, in, in, anyone that knows me knows that. I've, I've, I'm, a lot of who I am as a person is because of what I had an opportunity to watch my dad do things, you know. And so, um, you know, uh, it, was, it was right around June 5th, um, he, you know, had to go had to go in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And 30 days later, you know, he, he was gone. Oh, you know? no. And so, um, uh, you know, that was, that, was t that was difficult for us. Yeah. And so during this period of time, you know, there's a lot of, you know, can you get on a plane? Can you not get on a plane? I just, I just got on a plane, and then the, during all the midst of all of that, I was trying to put, I was trying to keep a an online, uh, 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 like like a show on. We did a lot of virtual shows. Mm -hmm. Actually, got a lot of them on YouTube, uh, where we did live shows. But in a period, and you're, you're doing live shows, but there's no live audience. You know. Right. And, and that probably makes it a lot tougher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we were we were you know just trying to produce those and and uh, yeah. Luckily, I had the opportunity, you know, like I said, with my father to watch him build mm -hmm. shows, and so I was able to get creative, just pulling, you know, gleaning from some of the things I'd I'd, I'd seen him do over the years to put together a show, um, and um, you know that's that's things we were able to do. But during that time, it was it was it was extremely tough. Yeah. Of course, that's that's my that's my pops, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm sure you miss him a lot. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Miss him a lot. But you know, uh, uh, there's there's some. One of the things I I really learned from him is to use this gift that we have, you know, to make this world a better place. I mean, and we could we could we could really sit and do nothing. We have two choices: we can sit and do nothing, or we can do something and. You know, um, uh, we've always made a decision to do something with this gift because it's, if, if it's if it's a if it's a gift, it's meant to be given, right? Right, right. It's not it's not meant to to keep for your own. So we just uh, use every opportunity we can, and you know, and uh, you know. So do growing something. up, growing up with your dad um, being a gospel singer and choir director, mm -hmm. when did you know that you wanted to or could be? A singer. What was that moment like when you said, "This is what I want to do, and I'm good at it"? Well, I, you know, I, I, uh, you know, it was it was when someone else said I was good at okay. it. I guess I guess okay. that would be honest, be perfectly honest with you. I mean, I knew I wanted okay. to do it. You know, I was watching and uh, I was learning. I get a chance. I, I mean, I really had an opportunity as the youngest uh, of two, and I was the youngest in the family. Uh, my my sister was actually the you know nightingale singer, you know, and and then my dad and I get a chance to s learn, but no one's expecting anything from me because I'm just listening, you know, and, and learning, and I learn how to do those harmonies and things like that. But it wasn't until uh, probably I, I was I was a a, a a sophomore in high school, and and my I I begged my dad to do this song. Uh, it's a Lionel Richie song. It was he was with the Commodores at the time, and it was called "Jesus Is Love." Okay. And my dad was building a show, 
and I begged my dad to let me sing that song, and I and I and he let me do it. Uh, uh, it was on a cassette tape. I, t- <laughs> I kept that. You guys don't remember. You you don't remember cassette tapes. Get that. But uh, uh, Patty, you remember cassette tapes, do you? I do. I do. <laughs> Patty so, does. I know I do. Yeah, but uh, I, I know what they are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I took. I man, I took that cassette tape to uh, the uh, Miss Carol Haywood, who was at who was our high school choir, okay. uh, cor- a chorus um, uh, director. And I let her hear it, and I wasn't even in there. I just, I just knew who she was. And she says, "Wow, you, you can really sing," and that was validation for me that, yeah, and maybe I can, can do it. She started letting me do, um, you know, sing solos, and I did another Lionel Richie song, "Truly." You guys remember that? Truly, yeah. I love Lionel Richie, man. Good, and, great ballad. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you, I, I don't know how many of you guys heard of this guy, but, but um, Eric Benet is a, is a, is a, is a, was, is a high school classmate of mine and we were in the same course class so we both did songs together you know and uh, uh, this uh, Carol Haywood and Robert Samuel they were very instrumental in just inspiring me to, 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 to do this and so uh, when I got out of high school I you know I went to when it, when it was time to get out of high school rather I went to go to school for music and you know uh, there was a, there was a backstory to this but my dad didn't want me to do that. Mm. He was actually concerned that, you know, for, for fear that, that you can't make a living doing that, you know. And so I joined in the U.S. Navy. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Thank you for your service. I joined the U.S. Navy, man. And I was like, okay, well, if, if Dad doesn't want me to go to you know, school for music, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go and I'll figure out what, I'm, what I want to do. And, and by the time I got out, guess what? I still want to be yeah. a musician. Yeah. So, but by this time, I had to know. I had enough confidence. I wasn't looking for approval from anyone. And I just remember uh, one day, I was so frustrated. I was. I couldn't play keyboard. I couldn't play guitar. I could only sing. And uh, I got so frustrated because I was trying to get a com- people to accompany me. And I said, "I'm doing this." And I just out loud said, "I'm doing it." Mm-hmm. And uh, when I out loud said I, something happened, it really did, and uh, and I, I you know I invested in the keyboard. I learned one chord at a time how to play the keyboard. I were I learned one chord at a time how to play the guitar. And I just I just you know was committed and consistent about that. And while I was doing that, other things started happening. But you know mm-hmm. uh, other opportunities started coming my way. Um, uh, I, I met a guy um, named um, uh, Alan Grip Smith. Uh, my my aunt actually owned a radio station in Milwaukee. Oh wow! And uh, she would bring R and B bands in. Well, she brought she was bringing in a guy. Uh, it's called Summerfest, and she was bringing in a guy named Keith Sweat. Alan was Keith Sweat's. You guys don't know. Me. Alan, Alan, <laughs> Alan was Keith Sweat's music director, and and so. She got somehow. She got Alan on the phone, and she says, "My, you know, my, uh, you know, you know the story. My nephew can really sing." <laughs> you know? How many times did they you hear know? that? Yeah. And, and so, yeah. but she was very persistent. She yeah. she made sure I got that meeting. She said, "Get down there to the hotel." And I went down there with my little boombox and cassette, and I, I let this guy <laughs> hear, hear some of my songs I had written and produced. You know, and uh, you know, he listened, and he says. Uh, you know, you're not really a good singer, but you got great songwriting uh, uh, potential. I was like, I was crushed. I was like, yeah. what? But. Yeah. So, uh, but I tell you what, he he uh, Alan became one of my closest friends. He became one of my uh, um, best coaches in life. And, and you know what? And he really pushed me to be a better singer. Yeah, and we started to write songs together. I mean, I, I mean, using use me, I did background vocals for Keith Sweat. You know, I did a little bit of songwriting. You know, all in Atlanta. I ended up moving down there, and uh, uh, that that when he that the day he told me that I wasn't really a good singer, it really made me listen to what I was sing, singing, and made me just hone my skills. So, uh, you can you know you can you can take that criticism, you know, uh, and stop, yeah, uh, and stop, or you can be motivated to do something. Right. So that was a lesson for me, actually, that I, that I sh- and, a, and a story that I share with a lot of people. Um, we do uh, a, a lot of public speaking, you know, to inspire you know, young, young, you know, it's, uh, aspiring artists. That's one of the stories I share. 
because it's hard. I think it's hard to be an aspiring artist and know a direction to yeah. go. And also, I, I think we think that somebody that is a singer or an entertainer, that's all there really is. They just show up on stage and mm-hmm. do their thing. Yes, absolutely. But there's so much behind the scenes as it relates to writing, recording, hiring talent. Oh, it's so much. Um, you know, getting your band behind you. Like, like for example, what goes into putting together a set list or a show. Well, I mean, yeah, there's, there's so many elements to it. And, and you know what? For and how many shows do you have? Like how many different? I, you know, I, I have uh, right now, and I'll just, I'll just list a couple of them. I have a, a total of like five or six go-to shows, and they all mean something to me. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, try, I try to make sure that they're, they're very different. Uh, one, for example, is our Motown show. And our Motown show, we use, uh, I mean, we just go right down memory lane. But how many songs are in the Motown catalog? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and so, uh, you know, to, to start with the end in mind is, is kind of how I do it. I, I, I look at the big picture. What do I want people to uh, experience when they leave here? And, and, and how do I take them uh, down that journey? You know, in, in, you know, for the next two and a half hours, you know, how do I get them there? And uh, you know it's a it's a you know it's a, a labor of love to be perfectly honest with you. I mean there there's I mean I flipped that set list man probably thirty or forty times before I even take it to the band. And then once I take it to the band, you know it's like okay so Terrell this is the set list. I say yep this is it this is the <laughs> yeah. final one. You know and, and prob- <laughs> probably about six or seven times they're like okay we're making a change so. You but know. then you have to know all those songs too, That's and then right. they have to learn how to play them. That's and right. Yeah, I mean it's 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 the it's the charting, it's the it's 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 the harmonies, uh, it's who plays what. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, it, there's a lot, and you know, and and you, you know, you really have to be all in. You know, in my if you're gonna mm-hmm. if you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna really be excellent. And yeah, I mean, I've I've heard the term before, fake it till you make it. Uh, I guess you can do that. That's just not my story. It's just it's not how I roll. So, you know. Do you do, I, I'm thinking about um, when I was telling Jerry about you and the song I played for her, because um, I know she likes Josh Groban. Oh, so yeah. So you cover, yeah. I mean, uh, you do a lot of covers, you do a lot of originals. I do, right. So um, the song that I played for her was Thankful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I mean, she just was, wow. Okay. You know, we want to, let's meet this guy. I want to hear this guy. I want to hear more. So, um, what, tell me about the show that you did that song for. What was that? And then let's, I, we have that here. So we're going to play okay. that, okay. that song and we're going to do that for Jerry. So. Oh, okay. All right. For Jerry. I'll I tell <laughs> yeah. you what, first of all, hat, uh, hats off to Josh Groban, man. What an incredible yeah singer uh, and, and yeah I, I think I, I can't remember who I think David Foster wrote that song I'm not sure but I mean it, it the song itself just has magic to it mm-hmm. you know and then it and then it shares so many things about it. it's a thought-provoking song a song I think it would make us all kind of have a call to action uh, but I got a chance to perform that song at, at uh, for charity uh, no it's actually uh, I've, I've done it twice one for charity that particular if you look on YouTube it's for uh, an event called Women of Vision. It was uh, the, nice. the, uh, yeah, these women were getting awards for just being, you know, uh, pioneers in, in their in their area of uh, industry, and uh, you know we had a great time um, uh, just performing that song. Um, well, it's, it's good time. It, and done very well. So well, thank you. We let's, tried. To- let's play that one. Let's do that. We are having a good time in here. Everybody's enjoying There's this music. music <laughs> and I'm kind of a connoisseur of music, too. Oh, and yeah. you are fantastic. You oh, really thanks. are good. Thanks so much. And people, uh, they even came in from the office here and, and like, wow. Yeah, well, that you know was what? great, Terrell. Man, you know what? Thanks to the legends. You know, it's, it's, it's been so much music out there. You know, uh, we just, well, a lot of us right now, we're, we're just riding on what the legends have done. I mean, I've got a show, Unforget- the Unforgettable Show is the one that we're going to be doing at, at Vib- Vibrato. Oh, okay. In, 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 uh, in May. So, uh, May, say the date again. May, May 19th. That's the club, it's Herb Albert's club, right? It's in Bel Air? That's, that's right, that's right. It's, yeah. And it's, 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 uh, that's it's a, a nice it's, it's, place. It's a it's, nice yeah, place, really man. Nice. So, yeah, so yeah, if, you, if you're there, man, please, please come on And they out. only take top flight talent. 
Well, you Going know, in that club. Well, I'm just saying, I'm, you know, I didn't say it, you said it. So, I mean, I you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to be there. Uh, man, it's, it's, it's limited seating, but you know what? It, it's, it's a great show. So do and people need to make a reservation there? Yeah, yeah, they, okay. they do. Okay. Uh, you know, you can, you can go to the bar, you know, and come in, but, uh, yeah. you know, but, uh, yeah, get a, get a, get a seat, man. Get a seat. Bring your friends. Yeah. 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 Do that. And, uh, you know, then we got, uh. Uh, April, I, oh, I forgot April 23rd, we're doing the Get, oh. to, get, get Together Foundation. That's, is that the One Hit Wonder show? One Hit Wonder. What are That's you right. singing if, as the one, which One Hit Wonders are you I, singing? I should almost not tell you, but oh. hey, I'm going I'm to give you a hint. I'm okay. going to give you a hit. Okay. Ooh, child, okay. things are going to get easy. Uh, okay. You, can you name that tune in? Four notes, I guess that's it. Patty can. Yeah, that's 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 <laughs> one of the songs. Uh, yeah, and um, and then let's not forget, you know, in uh, June eighteenth, I'm gonna be with Ambrosia, you know, at the uh, at the uh, town, town center. Yeah, Kenny Club. Club. So what show? What show are you doing there? Or like, what kinds of? What's on your set list for that show? Have you started setting that one up I, yet? You know what? I, I I have not started setting it up yet, but I can tell you. You know, it's going to be some, you know, a little bit of my originals and a little bit of, uh, I, I, one song that I know I'm going to do is, Well, my friends, the time has come uh-huh. to raise the roof and have some fun. Oh, Lionel, huh? Yeah, you guys know Lionel, I love Lionel yeah. Richard. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'll be throwing some of that in there. But uh, man, man, by all means, please uh, come out. We've got some, we've got mother, mother, other things, but those three shows, if, if you if you miss one, you come to another. And they're, and they're totally different. They're all totally different. Yeah, that's right. They're all to- totally different. So yeah. you can come to all of them, actually. Oh, you as a, yeah, and here. Be my guest, please. How many songs are in a set? Well, uh, when, you know what? When, I'm typically doing about I'm, I'm typically doing about twelve to fourteen songs. Okay. Because I mean, I don't stop and do a whole lot of talking. You guys came to hear me sing, not not to right. not to talk. I mean, I talk a little bit, but you know, you know the, we're like rolling them out, man, and uh, we have a good time. Next thing you know, people are dancing. I love to see people dance. In places where there's no dance floor, you know that's 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 the best, man. So they're having so, to create space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. love we love to see that happening. And, you know, I just I had to give uh, hats off to my band too. I mean, uh, you know, these these are just great people. One of the things you asked me about is like, what does it take to put together something like that? Mm-hmm. It also takes good people, man. I mean, uh, to, to to make it all work, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. And I got some good people that just help me uh, make make uh, magic. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a great time. And people relate to music in so many different ways. I mean, they relate to it joyously, and they relate to it as this has happened to me, and somebody's just able to say it better with these lyrics and, and right. sing it. So it's all about everybody feels the music in some form or fashion. Yeah, so. yeah. We try to fabric our shows with, you know, the original songs that I have, uh, you know, all, I, 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 those tell stories, and then our covers. We try to fuse them together, mm-hmm. so like mm-hmm. I said, so... So that story doesn't end, uh, you know, until we want it to. It doesn't. So uh, we're painting a picture for the, you know, forty-five minutes to the two-hour show, and uh, you know, everybody gets a nice ride. So I was looking on. It had to be YouTube, okay. and you had. It seemed like a pretty big production mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with some dancers and a. Big band and hey, we can get up to lighting cast and members. backdrops and oh, yeah. I mean so this is this is a uh, it's not like you're just showing up with your own little keyboard and and playing and singing this is a production yeah that's and that and that particular show if it's the one I think you're talking about uh, you know I, I have a I have a special place in my heart for the Alzheimer's uh, okay. Society you know three out of five I was just meeting with uh, Alzheimer's uh, uh, Society uh, last week and now it's up to four out of five people will be affected by Alzheimer's and we and our Motown show is 200 cast members and you know and, and we, we we bring young and old together uh, to create this family moment and uh, that's that show but uh, we won't be able to put 200 people on stage for at, at, <laughs> at, at vibrato or, or the Canyon Club you know so but uh, we're gonna do uh, uh, something uh, uh, special for you guys. So you also talked about you also talked about um, doing some things. You mentioned to me mm-hmm. earlier about um, doing a Christmas show and yeah. doing that in another state. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're doing stuff not just here in California, but mm-hmm. um, you mentioned Canada and now. Tell yeah. us about this. Christmas show that you're putting together yeah. too, and well, maybe maybe we can do that one here too at Christmas uh, time. Yeah, that is fantastic. You know, my my dad always uh, did a, 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 a Christmas concert 
for years and years and years. For mm -hmm. for sixty years, my dad put together a Christmas concert, and and uh, we left Milwaukee, moved to Mississippi. You know, they retired and moved to Mississippi, and he continued that trend down there. And he and and, and once he passed away, you know, I kind of took it upon myself to put together this Christmas concert, and we're calling it the Singing Christmas Tree. Okay. Okay. And uh, we're gonna we're just gonna go through that gamut all for charity you know uh but we're going to have a great time again bringing young and old together to put this choir together for the singing christmas tree down in mississippi and hopefully one day right here in los angeles santa you, clarita you know what i'd like to do because i know we're running out of time here and we could sit here and talk for probably another hour Absolutely. but um i would like to um have them play another song it's not released yet right that's right Right, okay. Right. So um, this is another one that you did with Preston Glass. That's right. That's okay. right. Okay. So tell us really briefly about that, and then let's hear a little bit of that one. Yeah, well, that's this, more of an up tempo, yeah. right? And it's, yeah. And you know, here I'll say this real quick. Uh, Cinco de Mayo is coming up. This is not really a, a Cinco de Mayo song, but the 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 ta the, the, the hook Asta Manana yeah. yeah. is a great song. It's 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 really when I, when this song was presented to me, it was a story. It was my life. You know, yeah. uh, and I was able to sing it. Preston gave this to me, and I wrote a couple more lyrics to it. And this is Let's Asta, hear it. Hasta manana. Hasta manana. Terrell, thank you so much for doing this, <laughs> taking this hour and spending it with us oh, in Santa no Clarita pleasure. and sharing your talent. And uh, it's so appreciated. And uh, a lot of us can't wait to hear more and oh. see more and uh, go to a couple of these shows that you mentioned. So... Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of you right out there with us. Uh, Patty, you've been great, man. Thank you. Carlos, of course, of course. Yeah. Love you, brother. <laughs> Sharon. Thank you. Thank you, Terrell. All right, God bless.